What is going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a great day. Today, we're not going to talk about uh, gold and silver. Today, we're just going to talk about change, <laughs> uh, specifically pennies and nickels. So, why the heck am I talking about pennies and nickels? It's a good question. <laughs> it's a very good question. So, if you're somewhat new, or maybe even if you're not new, probably more so than the new people, you know, if you're watching fellow YouTubers, stackers, and every now and then you come across a video and you'll see maybe in the background or maybe in the foreground, but you'll see them or some people with just like big jars of pennies or um, uh, a tray full of pennies. Um, but it's pretty common. You'll see in a lot of people's like videos, often in the, in the background, people will have jars of pennies that they've stacked or collected over time. And so you could be thinking to yourself, why the heck would anyone collect pennies? That's the lowest denomination of a coin. Um, like you're just, it seems like a waste of time, right? Uh, well, no, not really. So, I mean, it could be. <laughs> it's all in the eyes of the beholder. Um, but there's a reason to it. There's a method to the madness. Uh, trust me. So, if you have a red book, which I highly recommend everyone to get, um, especially if you're if you like U.S. coins, um, if you just like stacking precious metals, nah, you don't really need one. But if you like coins, absolutely, you should definitely get a red book. So if you look in the Red Book, um, in 1982, the United States changed the composition, the metal composition of the one cent penny, Lincoln penny. So in 1982 and before, pennies were made out of 95% copper and then 5% like nickel and tin. Uh, but it was 95% copper. That's the most important part. And then like in midway of 1982, they changed the composition. So it's from 1982, like halfway midpoint and onward. So to today, the composition of pennies uh, was changed to like 99% zinc, and then like a fractional percentages of copper, nickel, what have you. But it's mostly zinc. <clears throat> so, those jars that you see in the background, this is my jar here. I call him a uh, blue ball. He is the perfect mason jar. So good old blue ball here. Quick story. So I actually found this um, every year, every other year, a lot, a lot more so in the past when um, me and my siblings were kids. But my mom was actually having a garage sale a couple years ago. And so I go over to my parents' house pretty regularly, just have dinner, hang out. And, um, she was having this garage sale a couple years ago and I saw this jar and I was just like, ooh, I kind of like that. <laughs> How much are you asking for that for my, uh, mom? I think she had like, it's blue glass. So it's like somewhat nicer than regular glass, I guess. But I think she was asking like maybe five bucks. <laughs> so would have accepted anything over a dollar. 
So I just pulled that aside. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll keep that. I'll, I will put this to, to use. All right, sidetrack, side story's over. So um, <laughs> people will pull aside the 1982 and before pennies mainly because they're 95% copper. So people are stacking, saving, stashing, hoarding, whatever verb you want to use uh, for these pennies because with the price of copper, uh, these pennies are actually worth more in their copper value than they are in their monetary value. So these are worth exactly one cent. You know, United States, take this to a cashier, it's worth one cent, one penny. However, the copper that's made up of the penny uh, itself uh, costs or uh, is more than, valued more than one cent. It's like closer to two, two cents, maybe even three cents. So that is the main reason why people will pull these pennies aside is because they were made out of 95% copper. Now, there is a law that is kind of a, a speed bump that stops people from uh, truly taking advantage of this. So, like I said earlier, copper and also nickel, so it's copper and nickel, that those prices, the, the metal prices itself, have gone up, they've raised. And so it's gotten to a point where the copper and nickel it takes to make these pennies, these older pennies, and even today's modern day nickels, it costs more to make them than what they're actually worth. Like you can, uh, yeah, they're just, the metal contents are worth more than the monetary value itself. But like I said, there's a law that kind of prevents you from truly taking advantage of this uh, situation. So I'll just kind of read the law here. If you're outside the US, uh, you don't have to worry about any of this. <laughs> this is just for the United States. Um, but law is exportation, melting, and treatment of five cent and one cent coins. This rule is pursuant to 31 USC 5111D which authorizes the Secretary of the Treasury to prohibit or limit exportation, melting, or treatment of United States coins when the Secretary decides the prohibition or limitation is necessary to protect the coinage of the United States. This rule's purpose is to ensure that sufficient quantities of five cent and one cent coins remain in circulation to meet the needs of the United States. So basically that law is saying, yeah, we know <laughs> that these coins are worth more in the metal that they are just how they're made. But guess what? You cannot melt these down and sell these for a profit because we have made that illegal. That is against the law. You will be, I don't know, fined or jailed, <laughs> whatever punishment they see fit for you. But you cannot melt these down or export these specifically for a profit. So if you put on your lawyer caps and this is not a me making a recommendation or giving advice at all. I'm not a lawyer, have zero um, legal experience. 
But just from my common sense reading of that, um, I would say you can still technically melt these down. You just can't sell them anywhere. <laughs> so if you really wanted to, I guess you technically could melt these copper pennies into like a copper bar, but you cannot take that copper bar, that 95% copper bar to a refinery or, or export it to make money to sell. That, that action would be illegal against the law. Now, who's to know how you came about that 95% copper bar, you know, there's no way of telling, but that is the law. So that's why, short, uh, long story short, <laughs> you see in the background of a lot of YouTubers or coin collectors, these random jars or maybe bowls full of just copper pennies. Um, and that's because you still find these uh, 1982 and before pennies just out and about in everyday pocket change. So, the, I mean, billions of these were, were made, right? They're pennies. So, yeah, that, that's the main reason, you guys, is people, the I guess the logic behind it is eventually... I guess they theoretically could change that law so that when it gets off the books, all of a sudden, maybe you will be able to sell. Let's say there's a, a massive copper shortage in the world. Um, this is purely hypothetical. I have no idea if this will happen or not. <clears throat> but let's just say hypothetically the world is having a copper shortage, you know, uh, homes are being built like crazy. Um, copper is just being used up the wazoo <laughs> and we're short on copper. Hypothetically, the U S could change that law. They'll say, okay, you guys, we are in such short supply of copper. You know what? We're going to change that law. You guys, are now allowed to melt down and to sell for a profit your copper pennies, your nickel and copper uh, nickels. <laughs> uh, so have at it. You guys are free to do what you like. Go crazy. So that's kind of the logic behind it, the thought process, is that eventually one day you may be able to actually melt these down and sell these for a profit. So that's the general idea behind everything here. Um, hopefully this kind of clears up any questions as to why people are collecting pennies and random jars in the background. Now you know. <laughs> so it is mainly to, to get that copper even though you can't really do anything with it right now. <laughs> so, but who knows? They could change the law in the future. Anyways, what do you think of my pal Blue Ball here? He is the perfect mason jar. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.